and that leads perfectly to where I wanted to take this was this week is Green Bay. And I would guess if you would ask Mike Zimmer to give you the game plan, he would tell you that they're going to want to run the ball a lot against uh, the Packers and keep the ball away from Aaron Rodgers and play safe and not have turnovers. But can it really work when you're going up against a team that has one of the better quarterbacks in the NFL still, uh, even if Rodgers isn't quite as dangerous as he used to be, we've seen him light up the Vikings in the past uh, as recently, really the last time he was crazy good was 2016. Um, but now he's got a new offense and their defense is much better. And I'm having trouble figuring out how I should pick this game, Sage, so, how I should look at this one. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I watched that Packers game last week against Chicago and, and you know, all but all you know, Aaron was doing it and where they had success. And, you know, sort of like Chicago, the Packers in years past have lined up in shotgun for the most part, have been, you know, Aaron runs the show. And, of course, Aaron wants to throw the football. They call a lot of passes. All right. Then you actually come come to this year. And they were still in shotgun a lot in that last game, I think more than I thought. And they didn't have as much success, I don't think, as when they were when Rodgers was under center. By the way, the running back, I believe, leads led the NFL in rushing last year as far as yards per carry, just didn't have a lot of attempts, like five and a half or something like that. Yeah, Aaron Jones. And the yep. big one of the biggest plays of that game was a post route off of a play action uh, concept. So, you know, when, when he faked the tailback, good hard play action, Rodgers under center, and boom, the post route comes open and Aaron almost never misses those and he has time in the pocket that's the thing i mean he if you give him time he really can make magic happen throw the ball deep down the field and has great touch on the deep stuff but they haven't done that as much as late they've been you know Aaron and shotgun and spreading it out and throwing the ball over i'm thinking the packers might because again it's like that it's that sort of sean mcveigh kyle shanahan kubiak thing i think they might get to more traditional offense and aaron may not put up the you know, 5,000 yards and, you know, tons of attempts, but uh, he could be very, very dangerous. Like when you see him rolling out of the pocket or in the pocket with play action with plenty of time, you know, you can see him doing a lot of really good things and, you know, having that run game, getting a lot of second and twos and second and threes and knowing the coverage you're going to get. Uh, he could be very dangerous by throwing fewer passes for the Green Bay Packers. So, uh, Sage, a joke that I have made on the station here seems to be gaining a little bit of steam about Aaron Rodgers, and I want your opinion on this. So I joked over the summer, we did a show where we asked what the boldest take that might be true, that might come true, that you could come up with. And mine was Aaron Rodgers is washed. It's just he's washed up. He's never going to be the same. He's just OK now. He's not great. That was my bold opinion that could possibly come true, but probably not. It's gaining steam. Sage, uh, Michael David Smith of Pro Football Talk tweeted this today. I think Tom Brady and Drew Brees have made people overestimate how long quarterbacks typically stay in their primes. People say Aaron Rodgers is only 35. He's still got a lot of good years ahead of him. Many quarterbacks are past their primes in their mid 30s. And that comes with him, quote, tweeting an article called latest revelations make Aaron Rodgers contract look like a mistake. So uh, Aaron Rodgers washed seems to be um, getting to be internet popular. What do we think? Washed? So I, I think that, you know, as a player gets older, uh, you know, they have to have more of a support system. You look at Tom Brady now. Look at I mean, last year again. They, they were a run the football team last year. I, I saw that fullback devil, number 46 with the huge neck roll. Love he him. was consistently in the game on first and second down. Uh, and they were, you know, and Sony Michelle, their running back. That's the reason they drafted him. They drafted a running back in the first round. That's more of a tailback than a receiver. So they knew this is the offense we're going to have to have. But, but Tom is clutch, right? He is that word. He is clutch. Whether mm -hmm. it's on third down tomorrow from that, where it's in fourth quarter at the end of the first half where they score more points than anybody, or at the end of the game where it seems like they score more points than anybody, you know, on the clutch situations, he almost always comes through. And, you know, the question is, you know, can, can Aaron – you know, be that type of guy with maybe an offense that he doesn't have to be clutch on first and second down, but can he be clutch more on third down, be more efficient? Uh, I, I think is the term, you know, again, maybe some of his numbers go down, but he and this team have a better season. So they have the running back. They've got this style of offense with this, with the new head coach, Matt LaFleur. And now it looks like they have a defense that's pretty dang good under Mike Patton over there. You know, the, the Cleveland Browns head coach for a couple of years. I believe it's the second year there for him. Uh, Petten and I know Kyle Shanahan, I'm guessing LaFleur also worked together uh, at Cleveland back in those days. So these guys have known each other. He kept his job and that defense looked very, very good 
uh, against what I think is a, a pretty tough uh, Chicago offense a lot of times who spreads the ball out. They got a lot of weapons and and they really gave that to him pretty good. So they've got a type of team around where maybe less can be relied on Aaron Rodgers, uh, but yet he could still be clutch when it has to be and therefore then worth you know, the 30, $35 million, whatever he's making every year. So I want to talk more about the defense uh, in our next segment, because this revamped Green Bay defense is a unique feel for people. They're not used to hearing Green Bay's defense is dangerous, but Mike Zimmer talked about that a little bit today. And also there's an injury that I'm not sure whether it will affect the Vikings or not. Some people are actually saying it could be good news, but I'll tell you about that in our next segment. With sticking with Aaron Rodgers, He's been sacked, Sage, kind of an incredible amount of times over the last couple of years where you would not expect Aaron Rodgers, somebody who is mobile and athletic at his best in his career. I mean, he was an escape artist last year. This is nuts. 49 times sacked for a lost amount of yardage of 353 yards lost, which is outrageous. I mean, easily the most he's ever lost in his career. And he's always taken a lot of sacks. And then in the first game, and it's a, Bears defense, but the Vikings defense is also good. He gets sacked five times for 37 yards lost. And this is the area where I think Aaron Rodgers is not able to be efficient enough anymore to make up for that. Like he used to have nine yards per attempt and it was crazy because he could just throw it down the field and do anything he wants. But it, against Chicago, 6.8 yards per attempt. Over the last few years, he has not cleared seven and a half, which is usually that sort of marker for the better quarterbacks. And and that and that's where I see just not the same player is his efficiency has gone way down over the last three, four years. Well, again, you know, as he gets older, he he will be a little bit less mobile. So they're going to have to have a different style of offense. That's not him hanging on to the football and trying to run around and make plays. I, I believe even with that stat of 49 stats, uh, and you can probably look look this up pretty quickly with your pro football focus, but I believe a couple of his offensive linemen are generally ranked fairly high. You're correct. As far as like yes. pass protection, the left tackle, you know, Beluga, I feel like they're usually ranked, you know, not at the bottom for a quarterback that has as athletic, great at buying time and yet gets sacked 49 times. So to me, if you want to look like what what's winning football versus not winning football, whatever that is, which is, you know, everyone's trying to find what is that winning formula? My guess is Aaron not hanging on to the football forever. Uh, and trying to make things happen would be more beneficial as far as wins are concerned for the Green Bay Packers. And, you know, quick game stuff where you get the ball out of his hands and you, you let him manipulate defenses, but, you know, get get completions, get rid of the football. You don't have to be hero all the time. That's one thing Favre was so great at, I thought, in 2009 was, man, he was so good at getting the ball out of his hands quick and sort of like a hot potato sometimes and, and not hold on to it and try to, you know, forever and ever and ever. Uh, but to, you know, get the ball in his hands and get the ball in the receiver. If you watch Tom Brady, I remember there was an NFL Films, maybe it was an ESPN thing a couple of weeks ago, and they were reviewing uh, the Bosa that's in uh, San Diego, and he was trying to pass rush Tom Brady last offseason. He was, like, wired up or whatever. He was like, man, Tom gets rid of the football before you can even get close to getting to yes, him. Yep. That ball is out. He finds that matchup. He finds who's the one-on-one, -on -one, and he gets him the football. Like, I can't even get there. That's exhausting for defensive ends, and he doesn't get sacked very much. Dan Marino didn't get sacked very much either with the quick release or whatever. So I, I think that is a huge stat that uh, that the Packers need to figure out is fewer sacks for, for uh, their quarterback and you know get the ball out of his hands. I mean, you know he's going to be accurate. He's got to get the ball out of his hands and quit trying to be here all the time. So to your question, pro football focus ranked Green Bay's pass blocking number one in the NFL last year, and he still got sacked 49 times, and he also still threw the ball away 59 times, which was 19 more than the next – highest quarterback in terms of throwaways, which is so Jared if Goff. he, if he can't understand that, like if I'm Matt LaFleur or I'm the general manager uh, and, and you go to him with this stat and say, can we talk about this? If he doesn't see the negative of that, that's all on Aaron. If that mm -hmm. makes any sense. If you understand, like I am hurting the football team, the longer I try to hold on to the football, I'm taking a lot of sacks, which puts this in probably second long, third long situations that are, are just drive killers. Uh, this idea changed my style. If you can't do that, that's completely on Aaron and, and his maybe stubbornness or pride or his ego or whatever. My guess is that he can. My guess is that he can, uh, you know, understand that, you know, him doing fewer of those. If he gets sacked eight times by the Vikings this weekend, 
you know, they need to have a, a, you know, what they call a come to Jesus meeting and really figure out how are we going to win football games if this is how you're going to play. Yeah. And when you factor in the yards per attempt with the sacks, they were the 20th most efficient passing game in the NFL last year, which uh, just isn't going to fly, right? Like Kansas City was number one, uh, right up there, New England, the Chargers, the Rams, the Saints, all the best teams have efficient passing games. And the Packers just really weren't because of all the sacks that Rodgers took, which I think plays right into the hands of the Minnesota Vikings, who had 28 combined pressures on Matt Ryan in week one. And Everson Griffin looked great. And Daniil Hunter was a monster. Daniil Hunter was tied with Zadarius Smith for number one in the NFL last week for the most pressures put on the quarterback. So, um, you know, I, I look at this as even though Green Bay has a decent offensive line, if not a good offensive line, this is a huge advantage for the Vikings. And if you're picking Minnesota, this would be the reason you do it. Like you ask, well, can they really win a game like they did against Atlanta against Green Bay? If they sack Aaron Rodgers, then the answer is yes. Yeah, it plays in their hands. And then you're in third and long situations and Aaron's still trying to make things happen. And and be a magician back there. And occasionally, you know, Harrison Smith will come up with a football or two. So uh, this is really interesting. This early in the season, uh, the Vikings playing against a team that both teams know each other extremely well. And, you know, him with the new system and us sort of finding his, you know, a lot of people finding his faults, I guess, from some of their failures from years past and see if he is going to change. And, and this early in the season against the Vikings, that again, he should know all these blitzes. These double A gap things, they should have an answer. Uh, and good answers for them. And it's not Aaron just holding on to the football and trying to make something happen.